Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming. I appreciate you visiting. Uh, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button down below, it helps YouTube's algorithm find my channel, so it gets more promotion and I find more people. So I appreciate it if you do that. Um, today, I was going to do some various different styles of rings that incorporated triangle shapes in them. I thought that might be kind of a fun theme to do. So just some relatively simple ones that have triangle shapes in them. So that's going to be our topic today. Before we get started on that, I wanted to thank all my subscribers on YouTube. I passed 3,600 people uh, just recently, and that's amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your comments, and I love the suggestions. And I appreciate the input about the sound and everything that people have been telling me so uh, I can improve my videos. So thank you for that. Um, I have a new patron over on Patreon. Thank you, Liz, for signing up. I really appreciate it. I look forward to having you interacting over there. and. Uh, I hope you meet lots of nice people and uh, can exchange some ideas with them. If uh, you're interested in checking out my Patreon information, make sure to hit the video description. Uh, there's links for that. If you appreciate my work, there's a link to buy me a coffee where you can give me a little tip. Uh, there's a link to my merch store and there's a link to my website, which we're working on getting uh, much more uh, user friendly and full of pretty jewelry. So you should check out those things. So uh, let's get started on these projects. Okay, the three rings that I'm planning on making today, uh, none of these have stones in them, although that doesn't mean you couldn't incorporate a stone somewhere on them. I sketched them up here. Getting deeper into my little idea book. Okay, so I was thinking, it's hard to visualize here, but this part, this uh, drawing and this drawing are uh, different views of parts of the same ring. So. If you look at it this way, I kind of sketched it out a little bit three-dimensionally. So it'll have a, a circle cut through some sheet, and it's going to have some sheet that comes like this into an equilateral triangle on the top that's uh, see-through, and it's going to taper up on the sides over on the other side. And I don't know exactly how the curve is going to be on there, so I'm just going to cut these straight, and then I'll curve them to make them look natural. So they fit on the finger, that's number one. Number two is going to be, this is a side view of it, it's just a band, but I'm going to create a little uh, a hollow triangle kind of uh, negative space area on the top, and I think that'll make for kind of a cool ring, so we'll do that one. And then finally a wide band ring that has an open triangle on the top that's kind of built right into it. I've not made one like, I made something like this uh, as a prototype yesterday, but it was a little bit different. Actually, I'll show you. I was going with kind of a pagoda looking thing where it's got a, a domed triangle there and then a domed triangle that's smaller on top of it and then another one like that. So that's another idea you could do if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and make a variation of that where it's got a hollow triangle. So this it would be this first level here, but see through on the top so you could kind of see down into it. And then maybe I'll oxidize it or I'll try and get it really polished in there. I'm not sure which, so we'll see. Um, so yeah, we'll do that, and then, like I said, the, the wide band one with this triangle will be kind of a vertical sheet that merges into the band, or at least I'm going to try. So, um, starting a little late today, I'm going to see if I can knock all three of these off for the video. We'll give it a shot. Let's start with, uh, I think let's start with this one here. The materials I'm going to use, actually, on this one are pretty much all 18 gauge sheet. Um, with the exception of the band on this, I'll probably use uh, six gauge half round or eight gauge half round, or maybe some low dome half round or something for a band. Uh, the rest of this is all going to be 18, I guess. So, so first, we need to cut a piece out like this for the side. This is actually the scale. I think I set this up for this is about an eight. It's going to be this long right here. I'm going to cut it a little bit wider so I can trim it down. I need a rectangle that comes right out of there. I'm going to give myself a little extra room here. Inevitably I'll scratch the top or something. I'll need to file it down a little bit more. So I'm going to just give myself a little room to mess up. 99% of the time I use hard silver solder for everything. 
with a few exceptions, and I use um, Mighty Flux that I get from Rio Grande, which is pretty much the same stuff as Batterns Self Pickling Flux, if you're familiar with that. These shears everybody asks about are just little uh, Fiskars craft shears. They're surprisingly durable for such little tiny things. And you just saw me cut 18 gauge with it. It's, I've been trying to break these ones with 18 gauge and it still keeps holding together. So I'm uh, always a little amazed that these hold up so well. Okay, let's flatten this one out. I think I'm going to decide which side is going to be the top right now. And I'm probably going to go with one of these factory edges, although I, it's got a little bit of a bevel from the bench shears that they used to cut it. So I'm going to file that a little flatter. I think I'm going to put masking tape on this. That worked really well uh, a while back when I was uh, drawing a, a sketch of something to saw out. Sawing isn't my strongest suit, but um, I'm forcing myself to do it more because there are times when it's very useful. Actually, I have this little lapidary template that allows me to, to do circles nice, but I probably need to kind of figure out how far from the top. This is the top up here. I better label that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I'm going to start right about right there. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit extra because we added that extra on the bottom here. So let's, let's actually put it, I'm going to go about right there. So that's going to be the outside edge of the circle. And the other edge of the circle should come to about right there. And let's find the center. I'm going to find the center vertically just because that'll help me to line up the circle pretty well. So that's 10, 20, so that's about 24, so roughly 12. Just so it happens that this particular is just about an eight. Okay, so if I do that, that leaves me enough room on this side, enough room to curve this around because we're going to cut this down to be a little more like that. So I'm going to saw this out, I think, for our next step. Welcome to my messy dremeling and sawing area. <laughs> One of these days I will clean it up for you. Right now I'm going to make a little dimple so I can drill a hole through this effectively without having to chatter around too much. So I'll clean that up with the Dremel. I'll use one of these abrasive white wheels that I use. This. But I may not make you watch me that, do that since I have three different rings to make. I rounded that out mostly. I, I may have to do a little fine tuning once I take the tape off. But I'm going to go ahead and cut these corners off. I'm going to leave this all up here intact with some extra so that I don't leave myself too little room to work with. I need to adjust something a little bit. I think this is going to end up being a lot 
closer because the piece that I'm going to mount on here is going to be only 18 gauge thickness like this is this way too. So I think I'm going to have to file this down quite a bit because it's going to line this right here. All right, so I'll set that aside for a minute. Set that aside for a minute. And I'm going to cut this little piece here. So I want to have what looks to be a, a equilateral 60 degree triangle right on top. So the thing that's going to come out like this, we'll see how it looks. But, uh, this should be about the right length. I, I measured around here like this and then I basically laid it flat. And then these pieces that are going to curve out outwards in this dimension, like that, are going to be these things right here. So let's see if we can figure out how to do this. I'm going to do it in the same. Now we see if I measured straight or not. Not too bad for a retired English teacher. Okay, so what I was doing is marking those lines and I'll just, this is a pretty straight side here. So I can extend those lines down this way. In theory. And then we can decide we want this to be. Probably not very thick, I don't think. This is this part's going to be sticking upwards from this, so we're going to have to file this down eventually to match it anyway. So I don't want it to be too wide. It's like two millimeters probably. I'm just going to scribe a line from there. Right there. Keep in mind, I've never made one of these like this, so this is a learning process for me as well. <laughs> this one I saw something similar online, and I decided I was going to try to reverse engineer it, sort of. So, I'm going to. I might use the cutters to cut here, but I'm going to go use the saw to get this last little bit, probably, because uh, it's hard to get an inside cut like that. I'll use some of it this way. I want to make sure my it was a little hard to tell how round I had the, the hole, but it looks like it's pretty good fine tuning I need to later. Okay, so what I want to have happen here is I want this to be flat and then I want to wrap it around the mandrel and see how the geometry of it looks. That way I'll be able to figure out what to do next.
I'm spending a little time doing some shaping where I might not be talking much, so I might speed it up or cut it a little bit. So you to watch for it. I have to remove quite a bit of material on some of these pieces. Once I get this to where it matches the bottom of that curve pretty well and then goes straight up, I think I'll be pretty happy with it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and file this to where it's pretty symmetrical and flat. Because it's got a slight little twist because of the weird bending I was doing. I think I'm going to solder it on like that <clears throat> because that looks pretty good and I'm going to that'll allow me to start manipulating things to get it into a triangle shape so I don't want to have a lot of slop on the inside where it's hard to clean up the rest of this excess is going to get filed off so I'm going to put the solder you know, kind of on the outside here where it's touching both pieces So I'm just going to file that part off anyway. If it gets a little messy over there, I don't care. Okay, let's get this hot enough to get those to flow, and then if I need to, I'll add some more. The harder part to get hot on this one is going to be the sheet on the bottom, because this other stuff is sticking up pretty high and exposed to the flame. The sheet on the bottom, not so much. Just a little bit more just to be safe. So each one of these has to be 18 to the center. I'm going to cut those straight up and down now. I can see that I'm going to have to cut quite a bit more of this up and have it start curving more way up here. Like that, so I may have to use, I'm not sure, we'll figure that out. Next time I won't uh, add quite so much here, that's a little bit thick, so. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little filing to make these meet up nice. I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these down so they match this. And then I'll start shaping these here and I may do some of the shaping off. I'm just going to grind it away with the Dremel. Um, the only thing, I'm going to give myself a critique here because I've never made one of these before. Next time I do one of these, this piece, uh, this piece that I turned into this right here, I think this needs to be based on how you, uh, you end up distorting this piece of sheet. It needs to go more like like that, and then curve into there because <clears throat> once you have it angled inwards this way, 
it starts to really make it the top of it go upwards. And so you end up with kind of a, it's a little bit too, too far up. Now I think some people could wear this comfortably like that, you know, as a pinky ring or something, or as long as they put that point towards the back, I think it'll be fine. You know, when you're wearing it, it'll look cool. When you do this, it's going to look a little weird. But if I, th I think if you, um, if you do what I said with this, that'll straighten that back out a little bit that way and allow you to have a, a ring that sits nicely on there. But I think overall that's kind of a cool ring. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll, in the future when I make them, I'll change them a little bit to make them sit a little better. But, okay, so that's number one. Let's do number two right here, which is going to be, I need to make myself 22 millimeter uh, triangle, about an 18 gauge sheet. Look at that, that's about 22 millimeters. Let's do it here so we don't have to cut into this big part over here. That makes sense to me. Well, that was kind of a lucky happenstance. Okay, so I've already got this set to 60 degree angles. I'll be right back. I'm just going to cut out that center part like that. I'm just going to do a little file cleanup with this one. Actually, saw this one a little better than I usually do. I think that side looks a little cleaner, so I'm going to put that side to the dome side out. Actually, now it's big enough to, for me to solder that on. So let's solder that on. Let's uh, cut a piece. I have about 20 ideas for the triangles being incorporated into things, so I may revisit this topic at some point. Probably the easiest way to get a nice clean solder joint here would be to uh, pick solder a little bit of solder onto the bottom of these. That way, you don't have a lot of excess slop. That goes everywhere so because <clears throat> that's going to be a little challenging uh, spot to clean up after you're done since it's going to be kind of a recessed cavity area. This one, it's going to be harder to get the bottom piece hot. Just like the bottom of the other one, the last one. The top one is up exposed pretty high. So. Get underneath it if you want to do this. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to trim off the excess so I got my triangle back, but now it's a little more three-dimensional. And now I'm just going to do a clean-up file. And we'll 
imperfection in there that I not really able to get out very easily. So let's see, maybe it'll polish out. make a band. You know what? I'm not going to make you watch me make a band. If you want to see how I make a band, I'll put a link right up here for bands. So, whoa, got a little bit of... It's really humid here today, so my hair is a little fuzzy. Okay. So I made a little band, and uh, right where the solder joint is, I filed it flat. And I'm going to just kind of perch it right there. Chances are good that uh, if there's enough solder in that seam to stick it down well, but I also have some spare there if I need it. So, as soon as I spray some flux on here, I'm going to spray the ring right off of it, which would be how I usually do it. <laughs> See? Notice I'm mostly heating the bottom here because the ring just by being up on top of it is going to get quite a bit of heat. The bottom part's always the harder part to get up to temperature. At the very end, when, when I think the bottom part is starting to get the solder on the other piece to flow a little bit, then I'll focus right there. Right there. Number three is going to be a wide band tapered ring, but we're going to add an additional triangle kind of shape on the top. And that's relatively proportional. Let's make it a size uh, uh, nine, maybe. I think, as far as width goes, I'm going to try and keep it pretty consistent with this drawing. Uh, the triangle itself, height-wise. This is going to be 12 millimeters. I'll make the overall ring with 12 millimeters too. I think I'm going to go ahead and, uh, since this has got a taper in the design, I'm going to sketch that out on it right now while it's easier. this and then <clears throat> I'm going to make a triangular box vertical size and then we'll shape the bottom of it to match the curve of this ring. Mount it on there and then we'll probably cut out the inside. Normally I would uh, normally if I was making a wide band like this I would solder these uh, right now but as I'm going to mount something on the top after this was curved and then saw out the inside, I think it'll be easier to use the saw in it if I don't have these uh, uh, soldered together at that point because because <laughs> it'll get in the way of the saw. So. So what am I doing? <laughs> okay, I'm getting tired. So I think what I need to do is cut um, three strips of 18 gauge, all 12 uh, millimeters long. And I have to sit in a triangle upright like this. So I'm going to need to file these ends. And unfortunately, I have the cheaper model of these things that doesn't do um, 60 and 30 degree angles. It just does 45s and 90s. So I'm going to have to manually gauge it, which I've done before and we can, we can probably make do if we're careful. Okay, before anything moves, I'm going to try and solder that thing. I have a little bit of solder on the pad, I think. 
think. close to the center point of this. That's about the center. Looks like my measurements weren't too far off, so I can just mount it like that, I think. All right, so now I need to carve out part of the bottom of this so that it sits right down on there. So, I'm going to go over to the dremeling area. I think we're probably close enough. Okay, I think I'm going to solder this on. I poked the band, which is not always soldered closed on the bottom, like we left it. Um, I poked those ends down into this magnesia block, and I think I'm going to pick some from the outside here so I don't have a messy spot in the middle. And then uh, I'll solder the bottom together, pickle it, and then I'll clean them all up, and we'll see how they look. Oops, Chad dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and saw this out. I'm not going to show that on camera again because you've already seen me sawing, but I'm just going to dimple it, drill a hole, and then saw out the inside of that. And then we'll finish it off and then we'll pickle. Okay, so here's the finished product. I think, uh, like I said on this one, if I were to do it again, I would, you know, angle it. Uh, now that I know that that tips it up that way that much, I'd probably angle the sheet that I cut a little bit down that way so that it ends up being flat. I may have to recycle this one. It's not. It's a little bit too far that way, but I don't know. Somebody might like it. So I like the overall sh uh, shape and design. It's pretty cool, but I'll have to refine it a little bit. So. And you saw how to do that, you just need to change it that way. Uh, this one, that's pretty cool. I like the, the overall dome shape. I'll need to get in there and polish that better somehow. So, but that's, 
That's a nice looking ring. And this one's really sharp, I think. I like that one a lot. Fingerprints on it here. Oops. We'll see. Oh, I, I went ahead and polished those other two. Here's a little pagoda looking one. That one's kind of cool. Here's the one I didn't show you yet. I just thought, I, I always have those little pieces of triangular scrap from when I cut off the corners around the bezel. And I thought, why couldn't I make a cool little, you know, strips of triangles ring out of just some scraps, and I just I kind of overlapped them all the way around. And it's kind of interesting and, and unique. So, All right, well, those are some rings. All right, well, that was the triangle rings video. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, like I said before, make sure to hit the like button. That really helps me out a great deal. Uh, you know, check out a few other videos, and uh, I have lots of content here. I'm over 160 videos now. I put out three a week, and I try to hit different uh, skill levels as well as lots of variety as far as the pieces. So there's uh, good information for beginners. I think there's some intermediate projects, and there's some projects that will be a little more technically difficult. Uh, as well as just lots of ideas for people to, you know, try and copy. So, uh, check it out. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my links in my video description. And maybe become a patron if you want to. So, uh, thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing. Take care.